Hello, I'm Judy Bratt, CEO of Summit Insight, and welcome to our session today. Come on in. We're going to let all of you take a moment, get settled, and we'll be right with you. We're so excited you're with us. Come on in. So welcome to our GovCom webinar series, how to boost your federal win rate. And we're going to get underway as folks are logging on and have a chance to get to know each other. And so I'm Judy Brad, CEO of Summit Insight, and we're glad you're here. Summit Insight is a professional services company dedicated to serving established government contractors who are looking to grow their business in the federal arena. I firmly believe that marketing and sales are acts of service, and that's why we bring you this webinar series as a way to help you boost your business, learn more, connect with each other, and we offer a range of professional services education, consulting, and training. And we'll talk more about that shortly. In the meantime, we're getting started now and we're gonna get our content underway. So here we go. And we're just beginning to get our folks all lined up and I'm waiting for my co-presenter. We've got attendees logging on from all over the country. We're so glad that you are here. My co-host, is Heather Herbine of TS of TS Marketing. And they are one of the two partners that I'm delighted to be able to introduce to you that help me connect with you. And you're going to be meeting the other one as our panelist and co-presenter in just a moment. Here's what we're going to cover today. The top three things federal buyers want to know before they call you, the right way to engage all your key players at the right time, the latest research on how to influence your federal decision makers and teaming partners, the secret to attract and retain the top talent that you need to build a contract winning team. And these are all the things that we're going to be doing as we move along. And um, Heather, would you uh, drop the log on link over to Chris in background? and make sure we've got her with us. So we've got a couple of pop quizzes for you. So get ready to have a lively experience with us. You're gonna participate by using the chat box, by raising a hand, unmuting for live Q&A. You'll be able to book a follow-up call at the end. And by close of business on by close of business next Monday, you'll be able to have your follow up note that has links and all kinds of other goodies. So I'm going to start with a practice chat. And so as we begin our session, on a scale of one to 10, I would like you to drop a number in the chat of how important you think your website is to government decision makers when one is they don't even care or look at it. I'm not spending another dollar on it. And 10 is if we didn't have a website, my government buyer would never find us. So on a scale of one to 10, how important do you think your website is to your government decision makers? Let's see. Pauline says an eight. Angelina says six. Gabrielle says nine. Let's see. Let's see those numbers. Tracy says 10. Oh, you're on it. Melanie says 10. Michelle says seven. Fascinating. Walt says seven. Interesting. Interesting. Very cool. Very cool indeed. All right. You should be able to communicate with all of us. A bunch of tens here. You're in the right place. And if you want to increase your win rate, and this is why we put this content together, your website has an incredibly important role. And this is why we're completely thrilled to welcome our presenter, Chris Brinker, today. So right now, get out your notebook because you're going to take action. And at the end of our webinar, I'm going to ask you, what one thing have you decided to commit to doing today because you were here? So with that, help us help you. We've got poll questions, so we're going to launch a poll. We would love to get your input and hear more from you on what your federal sales goal is for the year ahead, how many people in your company are involved in the federal market, 
On a scale of one to 10, how important is federal business to your plans to grow the company? Let's tell us a little bit about your annual revenue and whether you'd consider federal sales training from somebody outside your company. Your input helps us create great content for you, and we really appreciate what you can tell us. So with that being said, welcome to Chris Brinker, who's co-founder of Ocean 5 Strategies. Ocean 5 specializes in helping established government contractors exceed their business goals by aligning, not aligning your marketing with the things you want to accomplish in the marketplace. Ocean 5's clients get strategies, programs, and campaigns that drive more contract wins and business growth, and their clients include prime contractors and subcontractors in the D.C. area and nationwide. The Ocean 5 team are recognized subject matter experts for government contractors in areas that include contract website design and development, search engine optimization, email campaigns, messaging, communications, content creation, and trade show support. They also offer marketing strategy workshops, messaging workshops to create a roadmap for growth for their clients. Chris and her team have won over 40 awards for their creative prowess and achievements in support of their clients. And so with that, I want to welcome Chris Brinker. Thank you, Judy. It was lovely. Um, hello, everybody, and, uh, and welcome. Um, what we want to cover today is um, talking about six ways to solve the, uh, some of the top problems um, that we hear from our government contracting um, environment. So let's uh, go ahead and um, actually to begin with, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, Judy did a, a wonderful thing, but just to kind of kick it off, um, you know, Ocean 5 has been helping companies grow for over about 15 years. And we focus on B2B and B2G companies. Um, and I want to say in the past five years, almost all of our clients uh, have been federal contractors. Um, we work typically with established companies with an aggressive growth goal. So the key really here for us, you know, is growth. So let's get you guys growing. Um, and I'm here to share some techniques uh, that have proven successful for our clients. So um, let's start with a common, uh, with some common questions that we hear. And I hear, how can I, one, get found by federal buyers uh, prior to the RFP stage, two, get on the short list faster with new buyers and agencies, Three, get federal buyers calling me. How do I get buyers calling me instead of me chasing them all the time? Um, and then how do I build credibility with risk averse buyers? And then how do I unseat our competition? So, you know, we, we get to hear that a lot. Um, and, uh, oops, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> um, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. If, 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 Somebody it's wants live. to increase their win rate. <laughs> if somebody wants to increase their win rate, then if you could do all five of these things, that would probably make a huge difference, right? I it love this list. It's a great list. If somebody could do even half of these things or three of these things, it would still make a big difference. So I love your list, and you're going to tell us more about how to do all these things, right? Yeah, and Judy, I, I think I think you hear these questions as much as we do. I think that's a, I think these are you know really top of mind. Um, and I am, I got to say, I'm thrilled to see um, some of the responses in your first question about um, people's impression of the importance of their website. Mm -hmm. um, because the first thing I wanted to do was actually dispel a common misconception. Um, An all too common comment that we hear from companies selling to the federal government is, our website doesn't matter. Government decision makers are not looking at our website. They don't use search engines to find us. It's all about relationships. So uh, who says this? All right, who agrees with that statement? Just uh, write yes if you agree and no if you don't. We're going to have a lot of fun in the chat here. Okay, so if you excellent. agree with this, if you agree with this, write yes. And if you disagree, write no. Gabriel make says sure no. You, Michelle says no. Make sure you guys no have had your, your coffee and you're awake, right? Yeah, you're, 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 it's even if you're not a morning person, that day is fantastic. Walt says, yeah. Anybody else? Yes or no? Like to see some more answers here. Straight up, yes or no. Our website doesn't matter. You agree? Yeah, agree. Yes, disagree. No. All right. Chris, 
All right. I'm going to hit you with the fact is that according to research, these are actual surveys of federal employees. 82% of federal decision makers rated corporate websites and search engine results as their top rated sources for research at various stages of the planning and decision making process. So they are building trust and relationship with your company through your website. So this actually means that your online presence really matters a lot. Not only that, but it can make the difference between whether or not somebody gives you a chance. One of my clients, uh, George, had honestly admitted that he had lost a, an opportunity because he had submitted a proposal and said, here's our past performance, here's what we do. And when they did the debriefing after they lost, the federal buyer came back to them and said, well, we looked at your website and we said these and saw we didn't see anything about that work on your website. And so yep. those things were not aligned. Clearly, how you do anything is how you do everything. You didn't take the care to keep your website up to date. What kind of care are you going to take of us? So yep. the content wasn't aligned. Anna Ehrman, who's now in the contract in the small business office at State Department, is one of many folks in the contracting community who will say, you know, this name you have on your website is not the same as the name that you have on your capability statement. It's not the same as the name you have in Sam. It doesn't align. I'm out of here. Yep. Yep. They they don't they don't like risk. They don't like risk. <laughs> no, they, they, they don't. In fact, the, the, the conference that um, Market Connections is involved in hosted by Government Marketing University, I remember being struck by the idea of um, a different kind of what they were calling the dark web, the idea that your federal buyer checks you out 12 times online before they talk to you for the first time. Yep. yep. And if, we'll they, be... if they don't get to time 12, they're never going to call you at all. We'll be we'll be referencing that, uh, that incredibly reputable re research uh, 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 several times. Um, so the next thing I wanted to kind of go over is I don't think um, I don't think that everybody fully understands um, you know how many roles your website plays uh, in growing a, gov a government contracting business. So again, the emphasis here is on growth. What do you need to grow? So we regularly hear three main primary objectives um, from various contractors. The first is educating, uh, um, educating uh, government buyers and influencers, um, educating about products, services, capabilities, your company's differentiation from your comp from your competitors, and winning the trust of influencers and decision makers, and building relationships through through your website, um, attracting new talent. In order to fulfill your contracts, you need great people. Uh, you wanna attract, educate, and win and retain top talent. Recruitment is a really big challenge and it's one that can really affect your ability to grow. The third is attracting partners. And this is, could be teaming partners, vendors, subcontractors, which are all also critical to growing your business. Um, and then in order to meet these priorities, your website needs to be a few things. It needs to be first, it needs to be findable. Yeah, your website needs to be search engine optimized, um, which has a lot of requirements and we'll discuss that in a minute. Um, you need to provide an outstanding visitor experience. You are competing with all websites, not just the other contractors, not, not just your competitors. If you think about your own experience visiting a website when you're searching for answers, you compare that experience, and that means how fast does it load, how easy is it to navigate, how long does it take you to find what you're looking for. You compare that with your favorite websites, not just the competitor. Um, third, you want to convert visitors. So you want to capture their contact information. Knowing how many people are visiting your website is really just a drop in the bucket and not actually necessarily a useful metric. You need to know who visited your website so you can reach out to them if and when the time is right. Let them start educating and qualifying themselves. Um, as Judy so eloquently puts it, and I'm, I'm gonna quote you here, you let me know if, if I got it right. <laughs> okay. There is no such thing as doing business with the federal government. You do business with people, with needs, fears, and priorities not found in a database. How'd I do? 
You got it right on. Excellent. So those people, people use internet to do research. And since government buyers and influencers are increasingly relying on their own online research, your website has become one of your most important assets. And Judy, are you, um, I am seeing, I think we're, are we into the next slide? Is that the one you want? Uh, that's the, yes, perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah, it could be one of your most important assets. Um, web design and website content in combination can lead government decision makers to you, help build relationships and help solve their acquisition challenges. So by demonstrating that you understand your decision makers challenges and laying out your solution in an easy to find, easy to understand format, this builds credibility and can move you to the short list of candidates. So next let's talk a little bit about GovCon website design and development essentials. So to stand out from your competitors, you're gonna to need to provide an excellent user experience, which is a combination of design and technical website development. And um, Google has established website performance metrics to quantify user experience. Um, this was in their 2021 release of core web vitals. Uh, Google actually offers a tremendous amount of information about this. If you, you know, just go to their, uh, to their uh, knowledge uh, resources, uh, you'll want to familiarize yourself um, and ensure that you have a knowledgeable internal expert or hire an external partner um, to get this right. And um, so how do we measure perception? Well, Core Web Vitals are, and I'll use their definition, are a set of real world user-centered metrics that quantify key aspects of the user experience. So what they do is they measure dimensions of web usability, such as load time, interactivity, and the stability of content as it loads, um, you know, isn't it aggravating when you try to poke on the button and stuff moves and then you can't actually uh, get where you're going. Um, so your website needs to really consider your professional image, branding, website design and development, uh, converting known visitors into leads. You need to talk about content and messaging and, uh, and search engine optimization. So we're gonna kind of go over all of these things. Um, professional image and branding, uh, your brand and brand values, uh, they need to be incorporated into the website design. Uh, the goal really is to get government decision makers to recognize that you're to recognize your company and recognize that you can solve their problems, uh, and it has to happen fast. So you've got about five seconds to grab a visitors' attention and actually keep them engaged. Five seconds. That's less than the attention of a goldfish, which is nine. <laughs> so part of your professional image and branding. Um, is, is really avoiding negative messaging. Um, for example, an SSL security risk notification. So that's that big, that uh, the SSL notification, uh, the padlock up in the corner of your URL bar tells people that your website is secure. Um, if you fail to have an SSL certificate uh, or your uh, website contains malware, uh, Google can attach a warning, um, which is a surefire way to lose credibility. And what we are trying to do is build trust, build credibility, build brand recognition, and build relationships. And in a day and age when cybersecurity is a mandatory for anyone doing business with DOD and a very high priority for anyone doing business with the federal government, this is a starting point. You can't afford to have somebody bounce right out the gate because you've failed something this basic. Right, right. So, um, you know, again, according to government decision makers, the number one resource for market research, decision making and vendor comparison is your website. And since these are the people that, who, that are determining whether you win their business or not, um, it's really vital uh, to have the information that they're looking for um, with as minimal effort as possible or they just might move on to the next contractor. 
So to stand out from your competitors, uh, you'll need to provide an excellent user experience. This is what we were talking about as far as user experience. Um, the core web vitals, um, when you uh, get this, uh, this presentation in the, in the PDF, if the, um, the link does not show up, please um, just go to Google and look up core web vitals and you will find a ton of information. Um, so can they, somebody hit a button and find out what the number is or the score on your own core web vitals on your website? Uh, there are a number of tools out there um, that Google has. Google has quite a few tools um, that it'll tell you uh, several things about your website, whether it's they've got one tool that will uh, verify whether it's um, web friendly or not. They have another tool that will help you determine your core web vitals, your site speed and all that. So those tools are definitely out there. Um, poke around and um, and Google as well as other companies have have uh, produced those tools. So in measuring the perception, um, we get a lot of jargon around measuring perception. So um, so what we'll try to do is just sort of break through some of that. Um, the core web vitals. This is uh, the the definition that Google gives us. And we're, we're really trying to say, I'm getting to this website, what's my experience? Um, am I finding what I need? Is it fast? And, uh, and, and am I finding what I'm expecting to find? So here's, here's where we get to do our translation. So, uh, and you'll find this graphic on Google's website. Uh, you'll probably find it everywhere talking about Core Web Vitals. So here's what Google has to say, no intrusive interstitials. And what that translates to is no irritating pop-ups. We need HTTPS and that's that SSL certificate we were talking about. Safe browsing means you don't have malware, you don't get some weird unsafe error message. Mobile friendly, that has a lot to do with making sure that your mobile experience is great because they judge your web experience first. So your whole, website reputation and experience is based on your mobile experience. And then getting into the new core web vitals. Um, visual stability means you don't have stuff jumping around, the advertising's popping up. Um, interactivity is how fast, uh, how much time does it take before you can actually use the website to do what you're there to do. And then um, the loading is, is how long does it take for you to actually be able to see the website. So our, our load time, uh, you know, speed matters. So we really wanna make sure that we're working with that um, and making sure that, that you're really ramping up and getting, getting your website to come up fast because Google aims for under half a second. Um, we're, we wanna make sure that things are mobile friendly um, your mobile site determines where your website appears in search results. This is what we were talking about, the, the mobile first uh, initiative. They rolled that out a couple of years ago. And then the design and the navigation, the layout of your site needs to be logical and intuitive. Structure, the most important and or most requested information should be the most accessible. Predictability, the buttons on your page need to provide your visitors with the information they expect. And pop-ups, uh, not all pop-ups are created equal. Some are okay, but intrusive ones could be just about anything like banners or overlays, something that actually can block any part of a mobile landing page. And then we wanna focus on converting unknown web visitors into leads. So while you're providing critical information to your potential buyers, it's actually the perfect time to collect some too. Incorporating landing pages into your website um, it provides you with insight as to who is, who is looking at you and what they are looking at. So this is where you go beyond just, hey, I've got, I've got traffic. Look at, look at how many people are coming to my website. It's really finding out information about the people that are being driven to your website. And, um, and then you get to make judgments as to whether those are the right people. And you can make uh, decisions as to, you know, to make changes. Uh, or if you're driving great quality prospects, then you want to do more of that. Um, and Chris, this is such an important thing when you're offering content 
of a kind that you've decided you want to show that it's valuable enough that you want somebody to be willing to trust you enough to turn over contact information. They need to feel safe enough with you and want your thing enough that they're willing to fork out contact information. Now, the cool thing is that other research shows that the average person who downloads what the industry calls a a lead magnet or what I I like to call catnip, the average downloader of catnip actually never reads or uses more than about 20% of whatever it is that they read. You want, so when you're thinking, I need to have a white paper or a big, huge thing, think about how hefty those things are that you actually download something that just addressed a pain point that was yep. enough of a bright, shiny object. You go, Ooh, I want to know where about that. I'll read it later. That's yep. it. So the thing that you create does not have to be the Gutenberg Bible. It does not have to be rocket science and having so- a bunch of these little guys. Um, gives you a sense of how well do I understand? What do I think? What are the top five things that I think my federal buyers have as owies right now? And then noticing who and how many people are attracted by the lines in the water, your lead magnets, no, gives you some you're idea. Absolutely right. So, you're right. And, and it, t- it tells you, do, are you showing up as not only smart enough, but trustworthy enough to be willing to do that. So Chris, one of the questions that comes up often with my clients is, hey, are government buyers able to go get these things? Um, Do your government clients use lead magnets as a way to engage their buyers on the website? Absolutely, absolutely. We are are building content and I like your point. Um, Understanding what your... um, prospect, whoever it is that you are, you know, driving to your website uh, and this, you know, this think again, what are the multiple purposes? It could be teaming partners. It could be top talent. You might want Mm -hmm. to, you might want them to read something about, you know, I don't know the, um, the brand of your company or, or, you know, uh, corporate image. Um, So it's again, not just the, the end buyer. Um, but understanding what they want to read or consume, it could be a podcast, it could be a webinar. Mm-hmm. So your, um, your point, um, I've actually, I've got an example of a landing page that the image that you see here is an example uh, of a landing page on the Ocean 5 website. Now, this is one of the small, the quote, smaller bite-sized pieces. It's a checklist. It's, a, it's two-sided. It's got two pages, but it's a yeah. checklist a website checklist for government contractors. Now we're offering this. Our desire is to allow visitors to edu- educate themselves. They're not ready to talk. They don't want to like, I don't know. I don't want to talk to the clown. Um, you know, <laughs> there. Uh, you, those of you that saw the movie know what that is. Um, so they can educate themselves and not have to talk to anybody. Um, and, and we get to find out, you know, hey, who, hey, who's out there looking and they might be in need of our help. Um, but this gives us a little bit of information of who's coming to our website. And, oh, there's the link in case somebody happens. A little extra bonus goodie. Um, if you guys uh, happen to be interested in that, you can you can actually download yeah. the So checklist. we want you to steal our ideas. We Remember want you to that- steal our stuff. Yeah, your, uh, your website isn't just a static place where your government buyer can check you out. It's also those of you who are going, why don't they return our calls? Well, actually talking to a live human, hey. Eh. Maybe, but before they do that, what are some other lower risk, stealthy ways that they can check you out just a little bit, try you on for size without actually talking to you because they're not ready to do that yet. And so finding lots of different ways to have interactivity, have linger time, people hanging out on your site, that gives them a chance um, to try you out. I believe the statistic is 78, 75, maybe 75% of all decision-making process is actually done before you have any idea that they're even interested in your service. They're doing research on their own, in their own time, educating themselves, finding out information, comparing you to competitors. And all this happens behind the scenes, all this happens. And this is why, you know, putting great content on your website, like let them come to you for the information. So on the next on the next page, this is another example. Um, again, you know, another landing page. Um, the technical term of a landing page is is basically it's a web page with a very specific purpose. 
So the only reason that page exists is for one reason. Um, it offers some highly valuable content for the visitors and you know we're going to ask you for some information. Now this one, again, from the Ocean 5 website, this is another type of content. This is a much heavier lift. This is somebody that's gotten to the point where they are actually ready to make the decision about now, how do I choose a website company? They really want to read a lot more about that. And so this one is a, it's a much larger um, piece of content and it's very informative. And again, we asked for some information. And once again, we gave you an extra little goodie there in case you're needing to do that kind of research. Um, but uh, so, you know, these are different types of content that you can have, um, you know, and they, and they basically will reveal opportunities uh, of leads that can turn into sales. Um, so, you know, this one, this is, uh, it's, a, it's a heavier lift. Uh, and they're probably further along in the decision-making process, but still building relationships. So, Let's talk a little bit about content. Uh, I'm sure everybody has heard the phrase, the content is king. Um, when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about content and the website in general, um, I kind of wanted to add, this is, uh, this is a newer piece of information. This is like, quote, uh, you know, hot off the press. We we're talking about building relationships and, um, and trust. And according to actually Market Connections just came out with their latest findings for this year's federal media marketing study. And what they found as far as trust is that trust is quite an issue um, for government contracting companies that 30% of the federal um, workers that they surveyed said that their trust value of government contractors is not good. Um, and this is a huge marketing challenge. And it is one that, um, that, you, that can, you can help solve with the content and the messaging on your website. Because again, you wanna build trust, you wanna build relationships where your prospects are researching. Um, so now starting to talk a little bit about content. Um, websites, you know, they've evolved from just being an online brochure uh, into actually a primary source of information about your company. And government buyers have a list of information that they expect to see. And we created our checklist really by, um, by research and by talking to actual government decision makers. Uh, and the, your website should support your business development efforts. Um, your website should basically be an online extension of your business development team. And it can be out there for you 24 seven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it can take your prospective client through the buyer's journey nurturing, educating, and guiding them uh, towards closing the deal. And this creates more highly qualified prospects and it helps save precious business development time. So spend more time closing, not selling. Chris, I have to say there's a marvelous question that Gabriel has dropped in the chat. And I like this, and I think this is the perfect time to Great. answer it. Gabriel says, is this presentation implying that government buyers potentially reach out to firms for goods and services outside of the normal proposal bidding process? And the answer is, Gabriel, no, it's not implying it. We're saying it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they do. There's is, lots of different ways. If you're if your company is in the federal arena and the, your primary way of interacting with and developing businesses to wait for things to be published on sam.gov and to bid on them, then um, you definitely want to be considering ways that you can engage with your buyers long before something gets defined and stuck on a website as a competition. So that you're shaping that requirement so that yes. by the time they compete something, you're the one they had in mind when they wrote yep. that specification. You've heard people say that GovCon is a relationship game. This is why. Um, and this is how business is done. If this is unsettling or kind of upsetting to you, good news is we got a new fiscal year just started. Uh, we're at the beginning of a new 12 month cycle. And this is a game that we can all play. And so Gabriel said, does this happen because the product or service is unique or are there other reasons they come to you directly? Gabriel, they'll come to you, they'll find you because somehow the, the content, the goodies you have on there, your keywords, maybe it's your LinkedIn that takes you to their website, something. They're searching on a keyword, something related to their problem or pain or a requirement. 
And so this takes us right back to what Chris is saying right on the screen here, the yep. content you have and how well that's aligned with the things your buyers are thinking about or looking at is what helps you connect. Chris, back to you. Yeah, no, and and Judy, I, you know, one of the, um, one of probably the most heartbreaking stories I've ever heard is, uh, you know, you heard um, Dottie Romo. She has a story when she was, when she was a contracting officer, her task was to go out and make sure that there were enough small businesses in a particular category with a particular service so that they could create an opportunity for small business. And she knew darned well that this was out there. She knew that there were small companies out there providing the service and she searched and she searched and she could not find a single website to support what she knew was true because the content wasn't out there. She couldn't find the information she was looking for. And she had to go back and said, nope, couldn't find any small businesses to give this opportunity for. Let's just give it back to the big boy incumbent. And that to me is just, you know, that that is one of my all time like, I just woo. <laughs> and, and Dottie is an award-winning senior executive service official now working in the Department of the Treasury. Okay. Dottie knows her stuff. She has advanced degrees in this stuff. And so our contracting officers work hard, but they can only work with what we give them. The so. the, the, pic, the picture, no, go back. Yeah. The picture. That's not the government contractor. That's the government, that is the government decision maker Fire. saying, help me. I'm looking for stuff and I can't find it. <laughs> That, that's that's who that yes. is yeah so exactly right yeah so thanks um so a little bit more about content um this is what we were saying is just you know it's it, your website should support your your bd team your business development objective should be driving your marketing um marketing should be in alignment the marketing folks and the BD folks, they should be friends, not enemies. So making sure that everything that you're doing with your marketing supports business development and then and then watching watching it, measuring it, making sure that it's working, do more of what's working, do less of what's not. Um, and this is where you actually start showing positive ROI on your marketing dollars. And because your marketing needs to actually, if it's done effectively, create qualified leads, humans who need what you do and have the money, the motive, the mission to be able to engage with you and consider choosing you. I love the distinction. Marketing is about helping them find you. Sales is about helping them choose you. And, and marketing can help the, the close, can help them choose you quicker because they've quali they've already educated themselves. They've proven to be a good fit. They've already decided they're a good fit so that once they get to the point of talking to an actual business development person, then it's, it's just, it's a much, you know, they're a highly qualified prospect. Um, so, you know, your decision makers are already consuming content online. Um, so, so be there for them, provide them with the information they came looking for, uh, information about your products, your services, um, information about the company. And these could look like white papers. They could be guides. They could be checklists, blog articles. Um, you can have links to webinars. Judy, you're really good at linking, linking for webinars. I also um, link to other people's stuff as well. Yes. So remember as well, LinkedIn, um, Mark M. Tower guru of LinkedIn for federal. Uh, and in fact, it was one of his sessions that brought, introduced me to Chris. Yay, Mark. If you're yeah, not familiar yeah. with Mark, then look at his stuff. But one of the things that Mark drives home is that easily 30% of your LinkedIn content can be sharing other OPC, yes. other people's content. And so remember that the things that you are sharing, I routinely share stuff from Ocean 5. I share stuff from Market Connections. So to be able to share other things about experts in your industry who are wise. There may be a report that honestly favorably ranks your company or talks about criteria for understanding who the best people are in your industry. Anything that's published by an outside objective source 
And if you're in the car industry, then it's the JD Power survey. In your industry, what else might that survey be? That, that your federal buyer who's buried under a lot of stuff, they might not get a chance to see what's the latest and greatest intelligence out there. Yeah. They love the eyes and ears that we bring them as industry to help them keep up. And that is a perfect segue into my next quote from Market Connections. <laughs> 73% of federal decision makers will download and share online content with colleagues and supervisors. Let me repeat that 73% of federal decision makers. To me, this I thought this was huge that they'll actually share the content with other colleagues and their supervisors. So again, you're earning trust, you're building brand recognition and you're building relationship. And a, a big yes and. Yes and is one of my favorite phrases. And it's also, you can't have improv comedy without yes and. Um, the, one of the things that your federal human wants to be able to do is to be successful in the organization, to be the go-to person, to be the helpful person. If you're providing meaty, substantive, useful content, and it's something that they can share around to colleagues, you're helping them look good. You're helping them be the well-informed person, the go-to person. That means that you're their top of mind person because you help them in their organization. Did that help sell you anything today? It might help you build a relationship that means you win tomorrow. Yep, good point, good point. So, you know, be, the government buyers are increasingly more interested in self-education before contacting a business development person which is good news, provided it is your website where they can get that critical information and not your competitor. And as you develop your content, you know, it can be developed as part of an actual uh, marketing strategy, which, you know, a well-designed website is really is an, uh, an integral part. Um, and that would positively impact things like your website traffic, your, visit, your visitor conversion to leads, um, lead nurturing and to sales conversion um, by using educational materials to ensure the consistent messaging and branding. Um, and also keep in mind if you're developing content that and this is, you can spend a lot of money and a lot of time on content. So well-written content, uh, you know, it can be efficiently re-engineered into other formats. So write it once, repurpose the heck out of it, um, you know, to get the maximum return on your investment. And uh, in addition to content developed for your website, um, you know, it can be repurposed into email nurture and social media campaigns. So you can share a case, a, the case study that's the one pager that might be the bare bones stuff that you're pasting yep. into a proposal, might be a one pager with a great story, might be a fabulous two minute video. Yep. People love video and a well written story in two minutes can have impact and shareability. Yes, and you know, and then they all compound on each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your online presence can really help with, you know, getting shortlisted. Um, the first time a government agency or decision maker connects with you could likely be through your website and how fast they find what they are looking for could be the difference between getting added to a short list of contractors and being an eliminated as a potential supplier, which we don't want. Um, so the next thing we're going to cover is actually the importance of messaging. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do we, how do we word ourselves? Um, you know, what are we going to say so that we can, you know, be the, the, get on, get on the short list. Um, so, um, you know, messaging not to be confused with content. And this is a, this is a common confusion. Uh, so not to be confused with content. Messaging is actually the core information you wanna share with your government influencers and decision makers. And it's a foundation uh, for your brand and should be incorporated into content, right? Um, I think next slide, Judy, I believe. Yes. Um, so your messaging, which is basically how do you say what you say and what words are you going to use? Mm. Uh, it needs to answer the following. What problem does your product or service solve? How do you eliminate risk? What fears or pain does your business eliminate? And how do you support their mission? And the more focused your messaging, the more effective it will be. Um, the focus 
uh, should be on the people that you are trying to influence. Uh, we call these personas. And, and it needs to be modified also based on your persona stage in the buyer's journey. And this is where we would want to refer to Judy's players and layers methodology because the government contracting world has a whole different ecosystem of personas um, than, you know, than, a, than a, like a B2B environment. So you wanna say a brief little thing about your players and layers? We're do, we'll do a little bit more about it at the wrap up, but there's folks at five different layers in the federal ecosystem and every single place that you want to be successful, you're going to need one or probably depending on the layer more relationships, because by the time you get to the point where someone is considering making a purchase, imagine how powerful it is where there's a whole group of people who are know who you are, are going, yeah, they are the low risk choice. How can we get, how can we make sure these people are on the short list are really the ones that we do business with? Your ability to do that starts with understanding who the players are at all the layers. And if you're going, boy, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, writing proposals, writing novels for strangers is also a whole lot of work. You're going to spend time and you're going to spend money. What you get to yes. choose is the mix. And you're going to waste a whole lot less of it if you start with the people side in the agencies you know you're meant to serve. Yes. And the good thing about writing quality content, if you're producing quality content and, you know, and, and quality downloadables, uh, you know, content, it could be written, it could be podcast, it could be, all, you know, all the things we mentioned. But when you nail it, when you get it right, you create it one time and then we call it evergreen. So you've invested your time and your, and your dollars into creating this content, but then you reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. And when you've refined it to know that you're attracting the right people, then you don't have to write the giant novels for strangers when they're the wrong strangers to be writing for. And so that, you know, is another really important, you know, just getting really targeted. Um, mm -hmm. You know, successful messaging addresses your target's audience, your target audience's concerns. Um, you know, they're, again, their they're challenges, their pain points. Um, you need to art really articulate your company's solutions and your advantage and your differentiators. Um, you know, and fully illustrating um, how you add value will uh, will also help get a Google prioritization. So it's like even more bang for your buck. And oh. Look, there's another quote. <laughs> I did get it right. <laughs> you did, Chris. Exactly did right. right. To be able to say the right thing to the right person at the right time is the whole ballgame. But you've got to be committed to knowing who they are first and not just at the organizational level, but the individual federal human level. It's good to see. I did, I did, that, I did that blindfolded. Um, don't throw so, the yeah. dart blindfolded. That would be bad. No, don't, no, 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 don't do that. Um, so, you know, once again, just touching on messaging, it is super important, um, you know, making sure that you're focusing on the right people, um, getting, getting to know those personas and, um, and making sure that, uh, that you're, that you're giving the right message. I, I know, and this is like really hokey because you hear it all the time, get, get the right message to the right person at the right time. But, but it really is important because the message that you provide to someone who's reading an article, they're just getting to know you, that message is going to be really different from somebody that's like all the way to the point of, you know, you're, you're including messaging in an RFP or they're actually ready um, to say, yes, it's, it's between you and your competitor. So the message is very different in those aspects. And you take, check out our friends at Market Connections as well. They have a couple of, of uh, federal media market studies that are juicy. They're um, a couple hundred bucks. They're worth downloading as well. And they've got a lot of juicy detail on what level of stuff and what medium and what players uh, want stuff at what time. And it's really eye-opening and can save you a truckload of yeah. money when you're thinking, what do I need to produce and when and what's going to help me with capture? Yeah, we love, we love Market Connections. Um, and messaging, you know, it's a big problem. Uh, it's a huge problem that we see on government contractor websites. Um, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, on target messaging, uh, as I said before, um, you know, it's really one of the, it's one of the biggest uh, requests that we get is, is help with messaging. 
So mm -hmm. it, you know, really is very important and it's important so an, to get on, it right. And on-target messaging can be, can vastly increase proposal effectiveness so that by the time somebody reads your proposal, they become aware of you, you've built liking and trust, and it's a foundation for increasing your win rate, which is why we put this content together for you. Exactly. Um, so, you know, then we get to actual search engine optimization. Um, you know, and at this point, uh, it's important to do things in the right order. We actually get people come to us and they, they say, um, hey, we want to do search engine optimization. We want to do a search an SEO program. And you, when you enter into an actual SEO program, you really need to make sure that you've built the foundation first. So making sure that you have, you know, you've laid out relevant and critical information, making sure that, you know, that the, those pieces are, are on your website, making sure that it's an easy to find format, that your navigation around the website is logical, um, and that you've demonstrated that you understand your client's challenges and articulated that you are, you are the one that is in the best position to solve them. Um, you know, so... Once you've gotten all that done, uh, you know, then all of that's great, but now you really do need to drive an SEO program, but honestly not before. And I was talking to somebody just the other day, they were, they had it in their head that they wanted to do SEO and pay-per-click advertising and social media. And I went to their website and I'm like, well, my suggestion would be really to focus on your content. And they're like, oh, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of energy. <laughs> that's an investment. You know, I just want to, you know, I just want to go do these, you know, these other, these little pieces. And I said to him, I said, well, it's kind of like you're inviting somebody back to your house for dinner and then you get there and there's no food on the table. What are they going to do when they get there? So one of my pieces of advice is please don't let anybody convince you to just start doing marketing for the sake of marketing. You really need to make sure that your website is ready and robust and you have, you have these forms, you've got ways of capturing information, you can capture and, and examine the data. Um, and then it makes sense you know, to go out and if you're gonna make you know, an investment in some of these other tools. But the goal is to bring everything back to your website because no matter what platform you might be on if you're pushing stuff out on linkedin or if you're doing you know any kind of advertising you want to bring it back to your website because that is the platform that is the environment you control does that make sense um so now this is where you know really seo comes in to play um and SEO is basically the process of improving the quality and the quantity of the website traffic. And you, you know, this is where you hear a lot about traffic um, and making what we want to make sure is that you're getting the right traffic and not just more traffic. Um, you want to really focus on um, quality traffic um, because that's what is going to ultimately lead to your your contract awards. Um, and you want to think about driving organic search and organic search means that somebody typed their inquiry into a search engine. It's most likely Google um, and selected a website from the list that came up on, here's another buzzword for you, search engine results page or otherwise known as SERP. Um, and this is a different channel from traffic gain from like paid advertising or special media or email. Um, or things like that. Um, and unfortunately, it's complicated. There are over 250 different criteria used by search engines to rank websites, um, from technical to on-page to local content and backlinks. Um, when constructing your website, your developers really need to focus on making it easy for search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, um, to understand how the site is structured. So they'll also want to structure each page to include important things like page titles, uh, the URLs, H tags, meta descriptions, all of these things help you get found. Um, okay, I suggest now we all take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, 
my eyes are glazing over and I'm starting to panic and go down for the third time and going, this is why I, I need adult supervision. This is, I'm good at the thing that I do. And I want to be in the hands of somebody who can do the thing that they do really well, because I know my part of the business. And that's why Ocean 5 are my go-to contractors who help me communicate with my people. Um, I'm introducing you to the people I trust with my business and to help me reach you. Yeah, and 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 vice versa. We're um, right there. Um, and this stuff is complicated, and it and it can be overwhelming. It's time consuming. It's complicated, and it can be um, it can be mentally overwhelming. Um, but you know, suffice to say that it's it's really as vital uh, that your SEO team keep up to date on shifting search engine algorithms, um, and you know the payoff. Uh, will be the increased quality of traffic, not just more traffic. Um, you know, it's it really is coming back to 82% of decision makers that I'm just going to keep, you know, repeating that because uh, this is what we're aiming for. And ultimately, the goal is to increase contract awards, to increase your win rate, to be the first ones on the minds of your federal buyers prior to the RFP, to get on the short list faster, to get your buyers calling you. You want your buyers calling you. And that sounds like win, 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 win. Ding, 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 ding. I like it. I like less, it. Who, less who, chasing who more closing. Excellent. I like it. So... Um, and you, you know you can grow, you can cover a lot more ground digitally with a professional website focused on image and branding and faster uh, than you can with in-person messaging. Uh, right. you, in -per mean, in then you can meetings. with you can with purely in-person means that you still need to make human connection. There's no doubt about that. True. But if you're only relying on an in-person meeting to put for your top end of the funnel, uh, you're going to need legions of armies to do that. And so well-chosen, well-created online digital marketing can help you collect, connect huge with compliment. more people up front and then be able to have the number of people, connect with the number of people who are qualified at the bottom of that to help you achieve your goals. Well, it's sort of like, you know, it's like it's, it's warming them up ahead of time and it's also nurturing them along the way and it reinforces your, your in-person or your or your your virtual meetings, whatever you know, the 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 face to face, mm -hmm. whether it's in person or virtual, um, and you know the the advantage. I know all this is really overwhelming, but um, the companies that embrace this sooner are you know your advantage is that while your competition is waiting to secure that meeting, you can already be in front of your buyers. Well, I've got and, a better, even better one. All right, here's a, we're going to do a couple more chat things as we, as, uh, as we wrap up. We've got a little bit of a linger time to take more questions as well. Really important. If you've got a situation, let us know about it. But right now, if there's one thing that all of this could do, who would like to minimize or even eliminate cold calls? Put me in the chat. Who are my people who would like to never make another cold call again? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Bing, 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 bing. The, bing, bing. the chat is up. lighting up. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the number one reason why I imagine to win more with no cold calls. And this is the biggest reason why all of this should matter to you. So um, all of my Mimi Mies and everyone else, as we wrap up, we want to do a closing quiz now, as we finish on a scale of one to 10. Now, how important do you think your website's going to be in 2022 to connect with and build relationships with your government decision makers? One to 10. Let's see it. We've got dozens of people from across the country here. Let's see our one to tens now. We got 10. We got 10. We got 10. We got religion, Chris. We got religion. They were listening. <laughs> they were you listening. Got it. Awesome sauce. Well, we've got a lot of powerful content we've covered. And uh, Chris, talk to us a little bit about the complimentary website evaluation. Yeah, um, by uh, by um, joining in today, uh, we'd like to offer you, if you want us to kind of check out your website, um, you know, we'll look at a number of things. You know, the, the important things that we just discussed, um, we'll kind of do a um, do a, a review uh, and an evaluation. Uh, it, you know, we go through, we, we rank rate stuff for you. And then, you know, we'll actually get on a call with you and, and walk through the results. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, um, you know, there's the, the link uh, where you can get the, 
request your evaluation. I'll ask you a few questions that'll give us a little bit of information about your company. We do a little research and then one of somebody will give you a call and um, and set up a set up a time to go over the results. Wonderful. Absolutely great. So there's something for you. And this link will be in the follow up email. And I'll ask uh, Heather if she would drop that in the chat as well. And so again, a wrap up on on Ocean 5, you can see they're an award winning growth agency providing marketing plans, strategy and programs that drive revenue and growth. You can see more about their core services there and on their website. <laughs> there you go. And go. Ocean 5 walks their talk. So for digital marketing campaigns, planning, content, websites, lead generation and conversion, full marketing services and strategic planning in the government contracting space, uh, consider Ocean 5. Uh, and questions and answers. Um, who else has some? If you've got some, let us know. If you want some live coaching on your situation, drop your question into the chat right now. Um, I'd love to know what one thing do you commit to trying today? because you were here. What one thing are you going to do because you decided to be here based on the things you learned today? Love to know. Drop it in the chat. In the meantime, we covered a lot. We talked about the top three things federal buyers want to know before they call you. The right way to engage your players at all the layers. We shared the latest research on how to influence your federal buyers and decision makers and the secret to attracting and retaining top talent to build a contract winning team. All of these things can be improved by heeding the advice that Chris has shared from Ocean 5 today. Again, if you haven't answered the poll, please do. It gives us a better sense of how we can serve you in future. And we've got resources for you as we wrap up. And for sure, again, if you've got questions or situations, drop them in the chat. Pauline's going to talk to our COO about putting more resources into B2G website. Gabriel's going to work on his ultimate value proposition. I like it. And Robert's going to check out our website and figure out what we need to do to make it mobile friendly. Good job. Excellent. People are taking action. I'm still glad to see that. So what's next for you? Find the right buyers. Get in front of them stay in front of them to win them over. You're going to get a follow-up email with links, including this recording and an invitation to future webinars on Monday. So watch for that email. If you're watching this on demand, you can expect to get that follow-up email after you've gone and registered and watched. We have a sneak preview announcement. We talked a little bit about players at all the layers, and I want you to be able to know that uh, we have a players and layers methodology. That is our way of making it easy for you to get in front of the people who need what you do. Imagine business literally in the palm of your hand. Players and layers methodology is our way of helping you know what to do, what to say, and what to ask to build relationships with the people that you really need to connect with in order to be successful. And so watch your email box for more information about that and an invitation to our upcoming training and webinar all about that. Next attendee bonus. Again, Chris has the complimentary website evaluation. Watch for that link. We also talked about the five people you need to meet, the GovCon personas guide. This infographic gives you at a snap the highlights of the five layers, and you can click through and get the full guide, 22 pages of goodness on ways to start to build trust and relationships with these folks. Some of our most valuable tools, we walk our talk. And so I'm hoping that this content is something you say, yeah, this made a difference. Let's talk. Uh, we're also at a particularly good time of year before you move forward to look back. If you're thinking, gee, where am I going to find the money and the resources and the time to do all this new stuff on websites? Perfect time to pause. The time you take to look back and say, hey, what did we do last year that worked? What should we tweak? What is really not delivering that we can stop doing? Because being able to make that decision well will free up the resources that you need to have on hand for doing more of the things that you want to be successful. So the federal Q4 sales hot wash, how to, what it is, how to do it, important things to do it successfully. That's a class that I'm offering on Government Marketing University. And there's the link to go and check it out and get your federal sales hot wash rolling 
effectively now. You want to get that done as soon as you can before you go into full-scale planning for the year ahead. If you've got that buttoned up, you're looking for instant training for your whole team to complement Chris's work and increase your win rate. Building blocks of a winning proposal can give you instant training on demand going through 10 power tactics that have won hundreds of millions of dollars of business for our clients. Open them up. This is training you can tap for your whole team and use it right away. So you'll get the link for that as well. It's one of our favorite power trainings. I love what uh, George Land buying at uh, Brandon Green Management said. I use these courses to provide a simple set of courses to ev educate our non-BD staff to be useful at proposal time. Their team loved it. I've had another client say, better than Shipley. Everybody's got different stuff, but people really like this class. And if you're looking this year to get in front of your the right federal buyers and close more business faster, our federal business intensive may be something you think about. It's not for everyone, but it's eight weeks of hard work. The companies that do the work are successful, sometimes winning multi-million dollar contracts within weeks of finishing the program. And so if you want to know more about that, you can check out on our website. We have other resources that can help you win. The people that we work with most often are ones that have companies that have more than five years in business, typically more than or close to five million in revenue, and most importantly, have about five people in the company engaged in federal marketing and business development and sales. And so, but we've got blogs, on demand webinars, upcoming events, and books for you. Your next win might be a conversation. So there's a link where you can request a meeting with me. We can, you'll, I promise you that you'll get at least three things that you can do that are usable intelligence in action, no matter what. So if that sounds attractive to you, book a, uh, book a conversation and let's take it from here. A big thank you to Chris Brinker, our webinar guest. I'm so glad we get to do this and collaborate and serve people together, Chris. Um, we've, with that, we've got some more time. If you've got a specific question for Chris about a specific situation, now is the time to ask. We would love to know. Any, and Chris, any closing thoughts, anything that uh, you really want people to take away, anything that uh, is top of mind for you right now? Yeah, I, I just, you know, really, um, I think going into, uh, into the new year, uh, armed and ready, um, you know, there's, there's enough time to really start um, focusing on being prepared, uh, you know, to go, to go into January um, and, uh, and just and just really getting yourself prepared, making sure that you are, you know, at least three steps in front of your, of your competition. And it, it just it really makes a difference. I've, I've seen, you know, the, um, you know, the, the work that we're doing for our, our, our clients. It just it's it it just it really it really makes a difference for them. Fantastic. Uh, any other questions and answers? Um, let us know and we'll kind of count them down here. Last call. Uh, please give me a call, 703-627-1074 or text. Check out the link, and we'd love to be hearing from you. We look forward to our next conversation. Chris Brinkert, thank you so much. Heather Herbine, thank you for being our moderator as well. And we'll see you all next time. Stay in touch and have a great new federal fiscal year. Thanks so much, Judy.